Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. China's sadistic treatment of the Muslims in the, in the Uyghur region is something very new. Muslims are in China since 1616 to 1618. Uh, between that time, they entered into China when uh, Saad ibn Abi Waqqas he went there. So we have seen over the centuries that the Muslims, they actually had a very good relationship with the Chinese people through diplomatic exchanges. Sometimes uh, it could be you know, because of trade, because of war. The point here is that the Muslims are present in China for a long time without any problem, for a long time, up until we found out what happened with Uyghur. I mean, they had, did have tensions, they did have problems with each other, but not at a scale that we are seeing right now. And China is, is, is becoming completely sadistic. You know, the amount of punishment, you know, the suffering that this, the Uyghur Muslims are going through, China is actually enjoying it. China is loving it, looks like. This is um, a topic that I wanted to talk to you first before I talk to you about the Yahudis' presence in, in Iran, the Yahudis' um, influence over Chinese policies against the Muslims. These things are related because if you understand why all of a sudden there is this shift of Chinese policy towards the Muslims for the worse, once you understand this shift, then you will see that subhanAllah, the reason they're doing it right now, it is not for no reason. In other words, China has a purpose. What we know from the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu he said about the, the Yahudi who would be in Iran, who would be giving support to the Jal, the Jal. He said, uh, uh, the Jal min Yahudi azbahan sab'una alfa alayhim tayya lisatu. The Rasulullah Sallallahu the Prophet he said that it will be 70,000 Jew who will be giving support, who will follow the Jal uh, when he will be here. Now, why I'm mentioning this in regards to what is happening in China, uh, simply because right now, China is closing up with the Yahudis, believe it or not. China has great investment, billions of dollars of investment in, in Israel. At the same time, they also have now influence in Iran, where these Yahudis will follow at the Jal, the place called Asfahan. This is dangerous because when you cozy up with a country like China, I'm talking about the Yahudi, when they cozy up with their country like China, they are supporting this uh, system, the, 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 the Jalik system that we talk about, that would try their best to do whatever they can to make sure that the voice of the Muslims are being suppressed, the, the voice of the Muslims are not heard, Rather, they will be subjugated to much more repression by the Chinese government. As a result, when the Jal will be here, and this is very uh, much of a subjective uh, opinion, when the Jal will be here, he will have a, a world where he can operate without any true believers coming out, raising voice against him. This is very subjective. Again, this is not anecdotal. This is what I'm saying. This is what my finding is, is telling me. Because China, they treated the Muslims, um, you know, okay for a long time. Right now, they have around 60 to 80 million Chinese Muslim living in China. They did not have any problem. The moment they started to cozy up with the Yahudis, it looks like everything changed. And when I say the cozy up with the Yahudis, they have relationship with the, the state of Israel for a long time. But recently, recently, especially in the time of Netanyahu, they are now investing billions and billions of dollars in, in, in their in infrastructure. They are doing more business, more trade, more commerce. The, the relationship, in other words, between China and the Yahudis, it's growing. China now is going to Iran. Iran is welcoming them. Uh, Iran is telling China, you would be taking our natural resources like the gas, the oil, we will export it to you. Uh, China at the same time, they are very happy with this welcome of, from Iran because uh, China, they want to have a solid stronghold 
in the Middle Eastern countries, in for in places like you know in Iran and also in Israel. As a result, what will happen is when the Jal you know will come, he will have these Yahudis benefiting from Chinese investment, not only in Iran but also in uh, sorry not only in Israel but also in Iran, and the Jalic system will find it much easy to operate, and to say that remember the jal one of the fitna that he will have would be ma'hu uh, nar wa jannah he will have rasul said that he will have with him jannah and nar one of the tools that the jal system will use is to lure people you know invite people um, through money through wealth this is a test a fitna China, when they are in Israel, they are also in Iran, they are booming, they're helping to boom their economy, will embolden these Yahudis who are waiting for the job with now a lot of money, thanks to China and Chinese investment, will then be able to propagate the message of the job throughout the world and tell everybody that if you follow the job, if you follow our Messiah, then we can help you out. The poor countries will be neglected, especially the Muslim poor countries, where Islam is being practiced, you know, a lot. But the countries that are close to the Jalik ideology and system, those countries will be promoted and be helped. My point here is that, dear and sisters, we are seeing this new phenomenon where superpowers are getting along with the Yahudi, who would be helping the Jal when he will be here. And at the same time, neglecting, ignoring the Muslims. You might argue, some people will say, no, no, brother, it's, it's not a big deal. The conflict here is really that people say, well, look, China is investing in Muslim countries. You know, in fact, Pakistan, they depend on China a lot. Imran Khan, he said, our country economy, our future is China. He said it out front, okay? Chinese investments are also being seen uh, in many Muslim African countries. So they would argue and tell me that, you know, no, 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 wait, brother, what are you talking about? You know, China is not good with only the, with the Yahudi, the Jew, but they're also good with the Muslims. The, the answer to that question, you know, is that Chinese relationship with countries are not based on their religion. It is based on their interest. Wherever they find their interest, they will go there. But the relationship the Chinese uh, government will have with the Yahudi will eventually be a relationship based on not only mutual interest, but at the same time, religion. China, right now, they do not have a religion. They are completely, almost like a stay in a godless country. They're running this country... Um, without any god without any religion they they follow communism but they are in as you know in essence they these people are all atheists they do not have any religion any god any they are not subscribed to anything so dear and sisters the point i'm trying to make here is that chinese relationship even though you might argue they have good relation with muslim countries but remember one thing, which is that at the end of the day, this setup that we have right now, it is a setup of the Jalik system. And the Jalik system will always uh, always push the superpowers, you know, could be US, could be China, towards their own interest. Whatever the, the Jalik system would want, they would use the superpower during that time for their own benefit. You might uh, you might say China is the superpower, US is a superpower, but wallahi as believers we should not be that narrow minded. We do not see things the way the whole world sees. We see it from Quran and Sunnah and we see it that this is not a matter of uh, which country is superpower, which country is not superpower, rather it is a matter of which country the Jalik system will use and which country will benefit this the Jalik system the most. Wallahi, this is how we see it as believers. Because 
at the end of the day, all of these countries, you know, the superpowers, they are promoting fahsha. They're promoting, uh, you know, wine. They're promoting riba, interest. They're promoting everything that, that is haram, that is prohibited in Islam. So it doesn't, doesn't matter who is the superpower. As long as the Jalik system is happy with this, that's all really matters. So your question is answered when you ask me this question, brother, look, China is really not, uh, you know, helping only the Jews, but also, also the Muslims is my answer, that it doesn't matter who you think they're helping. It is, at the end of the day, it's, it's the Jalik system that is benefiting from it. Some other people will argue, well, brother, China is in Iran for, you know, short term and they will just leave, you know, pack up and leave. Some people argue, well, they're, you know, helping, you know, the Yahudi Israel because maybe they uh, are finding more business in the Middle Eastern countries. They're finding more opportunities to do business with Israel. You will be naive. Wallahi, you'll be very naive to believe that because... Um, China is not in those countries only for short term, okay? They are not going doing business because all of a sudden they found some good business opportunity in those countries. China is going to be there for a long term. In fact, if you know the um, Islamic Revolution in the, in the 1979 when it took place, Chinese did not have influence, okay? But the Yahudis, they had. Believe it or not, the Yahudis, they actually supported this Islamic revolution in Iran in, in the 1979. China is finding that interest. Through this Islamic revolution, U.S. decided not to have any relationship, a good relationship, I should say, with Iran. They, 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 they disagreed with this Islamic revolution thing. They said, you know what, this thing is not for us. And this is what happened. The government that came, especially during the time of Ahmadinejad uh, in Iran, they were opposing U.S. Okay, they were opposing U.S. China is in Iran knowing that this Islamic revolution, this Islamic government would be not a problem for them at all. China would not go again, as I said, China is not doing business based on religion. If they did, then they would not go to Iran. Because right now, Iran has uh, successfully installed that government, Islamic revolution, after the, the revolution in, in 1979. China is, go, is going there because they have a much bigger purpose. They want to stay there. They want to benefit the country of Iran. While doing so, who will be actually benefited from it are the, the, is, the, is the Dajjalic system. It is the only Dajjalic system that is bringing China to Iran, that is bringing China to Israel. Now the question would be why? You know, why in the world would the Dajjalic system love China so much that they want to get China involved in pretty much everything? The reason for that and the answer for that is very simple, which is that, as I mentioned in the beginning, the sadistic treatment of the Chinese government against the Uyghur Muslims has set an example for the rest of the world about how to be so cruel to your own people in order to get rid of them. No country, we have no precedents in history, probably, where we have seen a minority, uh, 60 to 80 million people, compared to two, more than 2 billion population in a country, were treated the way Chinese people did, Chinese government did to the, to the Uyghur Muslim. The Jalik system is very happy with this. They are going like, yeah, man, this is exactly what we need. Oh, you are our guy. You know, they're telling China, you are the guy. You can do it. Forget about uh, U.S. Because remember, U.S., they have certain standard. They would not go. I mean, right now they're good. We do not know what will happen in the future. But U.S. has law against human rights violation, things like that. China don't care. The, the Jalik system loves China because through them, they can 
inflict maximum punishment on the believers. And China has proven it over and over again. Why do you think China is so much against the Muslims in, 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 the, in the region of Uyghur? It is because, wallahi, outwardly we think because China doesn't want this uh, you know, country to break apart and China doesn't want the Muslims to um, demand for independence. The other reason, and which is even more important, is that China is following the command of the Dajjalic system and they're tr proving to the Dajjalic system time and again that you can trust us. We are your guy. We can give you what you want. As a result, the Dajjalic system is preferring China to become the world superpower. In other words, to make it uh, short, no country can become a superpower unless they follow the Dajjalic system. And before, behind the Dajjalic system, we can say from the Hadith and Sunnah, it is the Yahud who are behind it. Uh, I hope that inshallah this uh, uh, reminder will benefit all of us and uh, create awareness and be more uh, proactive in terms of making dua for the brothers and sisters in Uyghur. If you're new here again, consider subscribing, like this video, if you did, share this video, inshallah. I'll see you soon again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.